Hello, my name is Travis McHenry. I'm the creator of the Egyptian Star Oracle. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to paint on a piece of papyrus. So as part of the, the Kickstarter program that I'm currently running for the Egyptian Star Oracle, I actually offer backers the opportunity to get one of these hand-painted Book of Nut papyruses. And you can see it's pretty cool. This is what it's based on right here on the screen behind me. This is called the Greenfield Papyrus. As you can see, it shows the, the what they call the, the Egyptians called the Book of Nut. This is the uh, goddess Nut, who was the not just the goddess of the night sky, but she was actually the, the night sky itself. So the stars would actually travel through her body as she was sort of bending over the earth. Down here at the bottom, you've got her brother Geb, who, is, who represents the earth itself. And then supporting her is uh, their father Shu, S-H-U, and he was the god of like moisture in the air. Um, he's connected to the winds in some ways, but really his, his key uh, function was to be moisture in the air. So he was what supported her above the earth. And this is what the stars would travel through each night on their journey across the night sky. Ra would also, uh, in his solar bark in the evening, would also make that journey. So um, I wanted to make these available because the Book of Nut was so influential in Egyptian astrology and in the, the life cycle of the Deccans. It was such a big part of my research that I wanted to find a way to share this with, with uh, people who, who were uh, fortunate enough to back the Kickstarter. So while I was in Egypt, I purchased uh, a whole bunch of papyrus, uh, 50 sheets of it actually, and from a papyrus shop in Cairo. Now, this is authentic Egyptian papyrus. It's actually made from the reeds of the, of the papyrus plant, and you can really see the, uh, the, the, the texture and the, the, the you know, originality, the uniqueness, I guess I should say, of each individual strand of the plant that went into making this. So what they do is they basically cut the stalks of the, the papyrus reeds down and then pound them flat and then pound them together and uh, with a little bit of water, of course. And once they dry, they dry into the sheet that, you know, when you sort of look at it, you think, oh my God, that thing's gonna fall apart any minute. But it's actually very sturdy. You know, I, you can roll it up, you can crush it, and, and it's, it's not going anywhere. So it's actually really sturdy. Um, the only time it gets a little bit fragile is if you really get down to the nitty gritty and start tearing right along the, the, the actual strips. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really, really sturdy. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not an artist. I, I'm an artist in a different way. I, I'm an artiste. I, I don't have any painting skills or drawing skills. That's just not my skill set. So the question became, how can I get this image on the Greenfield papyrus? How can I copy that over to a piece of blank papyrus uh, without having the ability to paint myself? So first I thought, well, maybe I can print it out on like a wide format printer like I did with, the, um, with some of my previous grimoires. Um, they're on rustic paper, but it's not this rustic. This is, this is really rustic. I mean, there's peaks and valleys and uh, this is not gonna go through your typical inkjet or a laser printer. And of course the edges are all rough. You know, if I trim those off, it, it defeats the purpose of it being authentic Egyptian papyrus. So you gotta keep the rough edges. This is not gonna go through a printer. So I thought, well, maybe I can get a screen printer. You know, they sort of lay them down and, and print over them with multiple colors. You know, maybe I can get a screen printer to do this for me. And every screen printer I talked to refused to even consider the project. They did not want to put this through their uh, machine process. So then I thought, okay, well, I'll hire an artist to do it. So every artist I talked to, you know, I offered them what I felt were very generous rates, but they still said, I, I don't think I can do this. So they all rejected the, the commission. So finally I said, Travis, you're gonna have to do it yourself. So the first thing I did was have a stencil made. I thought, okay, I'll make a stencil of this. Cause you can see, you know, it's mostly just line art really. So if I can just create these lines and a stencil, I should be able to paint over it. Well, I tried to do that and it was a disaster. The paint bled, it was, you couldn't control the, amount, the flow of the ink. So the paint was just bleeding all over the papyrus. It really looked very, very bad. And I thought, well, no one's gonna want this and they're certainly not gonna, going to want to have paid for it. So how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna get it from blank to the computer screen to, to this, to actually being a real representation? 
And finally, it dawned on me. What if I could trace it somehow? What if I could somehow get this image underneath the blank papyrus and trace it with an acrylic art pen? I've got one around here someplace. This is the actual one I used. And that worked, but it didn't work very well <clears throat> because I did not use a fine enough tip. You have to find the finest, absolute finest possible, smallest tip you can find if you're going to draw on papyrus because papyrus is, is a natural paper. It's ready to soak up and absorb anything you put on it. So if you use like a paintbrush, um, it's, it's gonna soak right into it. You've gotta be really, really careful with the amount of paint you're actually applying to it. And these paint brushes, uh, sorry, paint pens are not very precise. So the normal tips, it's almost like a sponge uh, where the paint sort of goes down into the tip and then soaks into whatever you're drawing on. If you're using canvas, it's perfectly fine. Canvas is resilient. It, it, it accepts the paint, but it doesn't soak into it the way it does on this natural papyrus. So you, I had to find the finest uh, trial and error process here. I, I had to find the finest tip possible. I think this is actually extra fine acrylic paint pen. And the important part of it being acrylic is this is not going to come off. Um, you can put water on this. The papyrus can handle the water and so can the acrylic paint. So even if you got this wet, the image is still going to stay on there. And the other thing is these are shipped. And this is the way the Egyptians would have carried them and kept them and, and stored them by being rolled up. So certain kinds of paint are not going to stand up to being rolled like this. They're going to come off after a few rolls or start to flake, maybe, maybe even on the first roll. But I found that the acrylic paint will hold up to it and it still looks just like it did when I painted it. So I'm gonna show you the process that I actually go through to, to paint these. That's the next step. So this is my general workspace here. I've got it all set up. Uh, this is a light board. I bought this, at least I think that's what it's called. I bought this on uh, Amazon. I think it was $20. Um, it's a decent size, so I can work with a, a large papyrus. <clears throat> you can see I've got a little statue of uh, the Egyptian god Toth, who was the god of writing next to me here. That's very important. If you don't have that, this won't work. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so step one was to print out the Greenfield papyrus on this piece of just regular paper. Um, I had to go through and desaturate the image. So the, the Greenfield papyrus itself is old, it's aged, it's brown. Uh, I had to take all that stuff away in Photoshop and then desaturate the image so and, and you know play around with the contrast a little bit. So I ended up with essentially just a line image of of the Book of Nut, which is what it would have originally looked like when it was painted by the Egyptians. And then the next step is, now you can just lay this over top and as you can see, voila, you can, you can really trace it quite easily. Let's uh, get out of there. Okay, so you can trace it quite easily just the way it is, but I find it's a little easier to actually tape this to the back so it doesn't move because as you're, um, uh, working with this, and you'll see this as I start actually actually doing the tracing. You end up moving this thing around a lot, and if you're not taping it down, it's it's pretty dangerous. It's it's likely to uh, to start moving in different directions. This is painter's tape, so you could use any kind of masking tape. Do not use something that is not going to come off, because it's got to be very easy to be pulled off uh, in the end. Here, you don't want to mess up your papyrus once you've finished the work. And you can do this with any image you can think of. Um, just find something online and, and desaturate the back so it looks similar to a line drawing and then, and then pop it onto the papyrus. So you gotta get yourself a tracing table or tracing a uh, light table, of course, here. But let's put this on. Okay, so there we go. So it's taped on, and now it's ready to actually do the artwork. <clears throat> Supposed to shake these and prime them. Got a little pad of paper here to prime it. Yeah, there you go. You want to test it, make sure it works. So I've only got 50 of these sheets of papyrus, so that means I, mistakes are not permitted. I'm not allowed to, to, to mess these up. And then you can sort of start anywhere. I'm always a little nervous to start. I'll start with Nut herself. And you just kind of follow the lines, you know, the natural, the, 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 
the lines that are written on this are all bodies for the most part. So you just kind of follow the natural line of what a body would, would be like. And go slow, there's no rush. It takes me about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to complete one. Nuts vagina here. This is where Ra, this is the spot where each night Ra actually issues forth back into the real world. And you can color in like this for the hair. The hair on the other parts are, the head hair if you will, are uh, like long, just lines, long lines put close together. So I'm actually gonna move my little Toth statue and the other stuff here so I can get a little more. And the other thing that's important when you're using the pen on the papyrus is to have a light touch. You cannot press it too hard because then too much ink comes out and the thing will, it'll start to run. It really looks really, really bad. So you just gotta be really careful as you're, cause see like there's some fine detail work like here with the toes. Okay, so let's do that part first. And then you gotta be really, really light with it. And I think about, you know, if, if the paint doesn't go on because uh, your touch is too light, that's okay. You can always go back through and, and do a little touch-up work later if you need to. Like I said, to do this whole thing, I mean, it, it looks like it's a lot of work, but actually it only took me about, it'll only take me about 45 minutes or so to do each one. And the other good thing about the acrylic paint pens is that they dry pretty quick. Um, I could probably touch some of the stuff that I've done already. I'm gonna try not to, but, uh, but if your hand you know, accidentally goes over it, it's not really gonna smear or anything like that. And you know, there are tiny imperfections in the original papyrus. So it's okay to have, you know, maybe that line didn't connect exactly the way it was supposed to. That's okay. The, the you know, original Egyptians who made these things were artists and they were, they were doing their best, um, but they weren't perfect either, just like we're not. So it's okay. And the thing is when taken as a whole, it, it'll look absolutely amazing. And it's completely one of a kind. You know, that's the other advantage to, to doing these by hand is um, even if two Kickstarter backers both were to compare their, their papyri, each one would just be slightly different. her long mane of hair. Hair was extremely important to the Egyptians, which is ironic because most Egyptian women actually shaved their heads, as did the priests. Um, but in the context of the Decans, the Decans themselves, the Decanal gods, were called the disheveled or the tussled. They were called the tussled because their hair was messed up from when uh, Ra had grabbed them by the hair to get them back into submission after they rebelled against it.
I also tried to freehand the hieroglyphics at one point, and I got pretty good at it because I, hieroglyph I uh, freehand the hieroglyphics on the mummies uh, that I'm making. And uh, that was quite an interesting learning curve. Again, I'm using the acrylic paint pens to do those, and you gotta have a really light touch because they will merge together and then it'll just be gibberish. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. That's what the end result of, of just doing uh, nut looks like. I'm sure you can sell, sorry. This is what the end result of just doing nut looks like. Um, you know, you can see it, it came out good. It, it looks uh, honestly almost identical to the original. Uh, if an Egyptian were to see this, they probably would, would not be able to tell the difference. Besides the fact that the, that the papyrus looks so brand new. So that's it. Uh, these are the paint pens I'm using, by the way. Deco color. This isn't an ad or anything. I'm not getting compensated by them. It's it's just the they happen to be the best. Extra fine tip. Let me show you a close up of the tip there. Yeah, extra fine tip. Those ones with the sponge thing at the end. Forget it. They're they're not going to work on papyrus. That's it.